All right, now to a battleground candidate topic that you're going to hear more and more about over the next several months ahead of the 2015 general election. We touched on it a bit with Rob Anders earlier, and that is the redrawing of political boundaries in the country's largest province. We have 30 new seats, folks. They've been created, uh, carved in and among uh, these provinces. There are six new seats in Alberta. Dwayne Brad is the chair of, the chair of and professor in the Department of Policy Studies at Mount Royal University in Calgary. Dwayne's sitting there where Rob Andrews was just a few minutes ago. Yep. Dwayne, let me ask you first about Rob, because you've had sort of a front row seat for this fight that Rob is saying nine times, nine times he's had to face off against uh, presumably what you'd call the conservative establishment uh, that doesn't like Rob Andrews. Um, is there any reason to expect that this time will be different? Well, Rob Andrews is the master at winning nomination battles. Uh, he has very little responsibilities on Parliament Hill. He's never going to get into cabinet. He's not going to be a parliamentary secretary. So his focus is on making sure that he remains the conservative candidate in what was Calgary West and is now Calgary Signal Hill. So I would not underestimate Anders. Uh, he'll use any trick in the book to make sure he wins his nomination. And he's taken on some pretty heavy hitters, but I think Ron Leipart is the biggest one to go after him. Uh, Leipart used to be press secretary for Peter Lougheed. That it illustrates the length of his roots within the Alberta Conservative Party. He was also the MLA, two-term MLA, in the same riding um, at the provincial level that they're going to be fighting for at the federal level. He was a senior cabinet minister, uh, both in health and in finance. Um, Leipart is going to be a formidable foe, probably more so than Redford. Redford in 2004 was not uh, she was an elected official. Yeah. She was a nobody, yeah. yeah. Ron Leipert is not, and so it's, it's going to be a tough battle. Um, I'm looking forward to watching that one. And, and you know, as uh, we've seen conservatives come under fire in Alberta because, of course, everybody knows you win the nomination if you're a conservative. You know, it's almost a slam dunk that you're going to be the MP. Leon Benoit in Vigerville Wainwright, he, he had yeah. some attacks that he had to fend off. I know Mike Lake up at Edmonton, um, he had to keep fending off Tim Upple before Tim Upple actually won uh, a riding there. We've got a riding open in McLeod. We're seeing seven people right now <laughs> compete for yeah. a nomination there. Edmonton, St. Albert, Brent Rathgeber, the Independent, leaves it open for some Conservatives to have a fight. There's all these fights, and now we've got this extra wrinkle of these, these, these new districts. Let me get yeah. your sense of the redistricting. Do you have any thoughts about the way things were carved up? Are there some weird ones? Are there some opportunities no, I, I, for, for Liberals or New Democrats, maybe? Uh, well, let's deal with the first one. I right. think they did this pretty, pretty fairly. I, I will say that when we do redistricting in Canada, it tends to be a nonpartisan issue. I know there were problems in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. uh, but Saskatchewan had some wonky ridings where they tried to meld rural and urban ridings together, uh, and, and they got rid of those. Um, so I think we do this better than, let's say, Texas or California does. Uh, having said that, it does create... Um, interesting battles. Uh, you'll notice that we always add seats. We never subtract seats. And that's because we don't want to merge two seats into one and have two incumbents battling it out. And it makes it so much easier just to add additional seats, which is why our House of Commons is getting way too big. Interestingly, in the Nova Scotia provincial election, which we covered here on Battleground, of course, they went from 55 seats to 54, but they had retiring incumbents in just the right spots, so nobody exactly. was, was running against it. So things are getting bigger, and, and one of the things is we have been looking at polls over the last several months, and we continue to see Justin Trudeau's liberals leading in the, in the, the national uh, uh, you know, popular vote. A lot of conservatives say to me and say, you know, yes, they'd rather be higher in the polls than they are, certainly, but... They say we're going to get six new seats in, in Alberta. They're going to get new seats in B.C., mostly in the lower mainland. Get new seats around the GTA in Toronto. In other words, going to get new seats everywhere. Conservatives are already winning lots of seats. And that may really play into the favor of the conservatives come oh, 2015. Uh Oh, I think so. And I've heard people say, you know, that this was done, uh, you know, to support the, the, the Conservative Party. No, the fact is the Conservatives are strongest where the economy is strongest, where population mm. growth is the strongest. And so in, in uh, you know, the GTA area in Alberta and in the lower mainland is the growth centers of this country. And that's where the seats are. And that's where the Conservatives do very well. And so I would also look uh, at the polls with a bit of a jaundiced eye because it is way before 2015. Sure. And so opposition parties tend to do much better in the polls, with just you know, when the elections aren't on the, the immediate horizon. The last sort of real inside sort of politics question, Dwayne, is that 
we know the Conservative Party, we generally also give them a little bit of an advantage because they are very well organized, good get out the vote, they know where their people are, they know where their money is. You redraw things, does that sort of level the playing field a bit because the Conservatives, like everybody else, kind of has to start over a little bit and put their voter databases into you know, new polls, new precincts? No, it's a pretty sophisticated voter machine uh, that the Conservatives had and, uh, and continue to have. And so just moving the borders of various ridings around I don't think is going to affect that machine. What I will say, though, is that the Liberals are getting better at fundraising, and we can see that in the fundraising dollars. And I think the Senate scandal has hurt mm -hmm. the Conservatives in, in raising money. So give them another year and a half, and we'll see if, if the Liberals continue to raise that sort of money around a guy like Justin Trudeau and um, whether the Conservatives can recover from that Senate problem. One other last thing, and try to link the, the Rob Anders story to the Conservatives, sure. is he is a very good fundraiser for the party. And I think it's been one of the reasons that, that the Harper has protected him from nomination battles and has supported some of his nomination efforts because he can raise so much money in Calgary West that he can then distribute to other ridings. That's a very good point, too. Dwayne Brad, always great to chat with you. Mount Royal University, thank you so much. See you, David. Nice.